session back in about August or so and I was super excited so the first thing I went was I went and told my advisor I said well I have good news and I have bad news the good news is that I was just asked to speak at the annual meeting of the American Economic Association <laughs> the bad news is that it's at the humor session <laughs> but don't worry it's not about my dissertation no one thinks my dissertation is laughable yet but that might just be because no one's read it, I'm not sure. But it'll be fine. So, here I am. And you can tell I really, really do like the subject of economics. And I was trying to explain exactly how I like it, why I like it, and what I think about. I'm going to make an analogy for you. So, we just heard a lovely country recording artist, Merle Hazard. There's another pretty popular country recording artist named Taylor Swift. Now, I was watching Saturday Night Live the other day, and she said that whenever she really feels strongly about something, she really feels the need to write a song about it. So well, that really struck a chord with me, but I'm a nerdy economist with no musical talent, so rather than writing songs, I make graphs. So we're just gonna go with that. So I'm thinking about this humor presentation, and the first graph that comes to mind is the following. <laughs> so well, at first, the only people I knew that were gonna be speaking here, or that were supposed to be speaking here, were myself and Nobel Laureate Jim Heckman. <laughs> so this is really what the world looked like to me at the time. See, we have you know academic experience versus interest in economic humor. On one side, you have me, and on the other, you have not only Jim Heckman, but also Austin Goolsby, who we've seen on The Daily Show, and who was actually named Washington's funnest, funniest celebrity. So this is the picture in my mind for a while, and then I got word about the other people that were speaking, and I realized that, like the Phillips curve, we needed a version 2.0 for this, because the relationship just didn't work anymore. So we come to the following. Now we have academic experience versus unintentional or not, humor value. Again, me on the left-hand side, hopefully, you can let me know afterwards. We have some third-rate job market papers. Those are sometimes pretty funny. Then on the other side, we've got a number of pretty prominent examples here, which you may or may not be familiar with. The first one is Christina Romer, who is my hero, because according to the New York Times, when she saw President Obama swat a fly off of Larry Summer's shoe, she said, next time, can you, can you aim a little higher, please? <laughs> really stuck with me and thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Going back to our graph, once again, we have Austin Goolsby. We really like watching on The Daily Show, both as a contributor and interviewee, but also in the short segments. He's really just a good sport about things, really appreciate that. And last but not least, we have the illustrious Ed Glazer and John Campbell, who, if you recall a few years ago, had a particularly entertaining Harvard recruiting video. So I don't think that you can look up the original video anymore, but there are many, many very funny parodies out there to be had. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Like I said, I really like economics. I think that it's really important for the general public to understand economics. Because just a little knowledge of economics can make you a better citizen, can make you a better voter, and in general can just help you not suck at life. <laughs> so, but I, I'm perfectly normal, as you can see. I like sports. I go to concerts. People go to concerts, right? I'm a friend to the animals. That donkey was really stubborn. I was trying to teach him about the tragedy of the commons, and he really, he wanted none of it, and he actually later tried to eat the economics book. It was a little stubborn. And I go to the beach. My parents live in Florida. I like going to the beach, especially during the holidays. Someone pointed out to me that rather than me teaching the lifeguard, he probably should have been teaching me about saving. Somebody else asked if I was teaching him the wave theory of economics. I actually had to look that one up. 
Is that I'm a mainstream economist. I don't, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> but like I said, perfectly normal. My eventual goal, I'm not gonna be an academic, my eventual goal is to be a writer. And one of the things that I'm thinking about is how to bring economics to the general public and have it be more intriguing, entertaining, less off-putting, less ivory tower, and just more fun for them because I really think that economics is fun. So I think about this and say, well, how can I convey this to people? And then I remember a very tried and true business principle that principle being sex sells. <laughs> and Economist Do It With Models was born. <coughs> now, this isn't a new idea. I didn't coin the phrase. It's been out there for a while. It's prevalent not only in economics, but in other professions. We have elect electricians do it with more frequency and less resistance. I particularly like that one. You <laughs> say, so, well, that's great. I've got a name. I'm going to have a website where I'm going to try to teach people about the economics of everyday life. Now I need a few things to go along with that name. Probably should have a graphic of some sort. I started out and said, well, economists do it with models. Let's put up some supply and demand diagrams because that's what I think about when I think about models, sadly enough. <laughs> now, sometimes when things are meant to happen, they just kind of fall in your lap. So one day, a friend of mine sent me this. <laughs> I said, hmm. <laughs> You guys are better than I am because I have to say, at first, I didn't see it. I couldn't do magic eye pictures either, and I was pretty confused for about 30 seconds. And then there was this aha moment. It was great. So this is perfect. I'm totally going to get the rights to this. I'm going to use it. Just amazing. Unfortunately, that meant that a few other suggestions had to be put by the wayside, even though they too were pretty entertaining. We have rejected graphic number one. Economists do it with models, a very literal interpretation. I also have rejected suggestion number two, again, economists do it with models. People really seem to like this one. I did not think that this would get the best reaction, but almost universally, this is the top, this is the top laugh getter. I think that I just don't get it because I'm not a macro person. I don't know. <laughs> got a name, I got a graphic. This is going pretty well. So I just need some sort of a subtitle, you know, catchy subtitle, economists do it with models. Well, why? It seems like that's going somewhere. So how do we think about this? Because we need to keep within this whole theme that I've got going here. Luckily, the world of economics is suffering no shortage of words that can be made to sound dirty. So I added in some finance here too, so just let's do a little bit of brainstorming here. So under economics, I mean, supply and demand are the obvious ones. Curves, that's stimulus, package, bus, integrate, diminishing returns, even though that one's a little bit depressing if you think about it. And you can't leave out Slutsky. And you start thinking about finance and you even have more variety. That spread, straddle, call, naked. My personal favorite, yield to maturity. I said, okay, we have a lot to choose from here. And I think it's because there was a lot to choose from, it really took a while to come up with a little subtitle or slogan. We figured it out eventually. So we're going to stick with the basics, the tried and true. And we get economists do it with models because there's no shortage of demand for the curves that they supply. 